Sorry to Bother You is the directorial debut of Boots Riley, an already established rapper who I will admit I, I had no knowledge of prior to this movie because I have listened to little or no rap. But anyway, the film stars Lake Heath Stanfield as Cassius Green, a black man who gets a job at a telemarketing agency and learns how to use his white voice. It's a type of voice that, um, that, uh, that he puts on to make it to make himself sound more confident over the phone like um, one character actually describes that the white voice is is the voice that you um, that a black person gives when he gets pulled over by the cops the type of voice where it sounds like uh, your bills are paid you're not in any kind of financial distress and you've never been fired from a job and this white voice is portrayed by David Cross and when Cassius begins making huge amounts of sales for his company he gets promoted to this status called Power Caller, and since he's a bit higher up in the chain, he starts to uncover some of the nefarious things that his company, as well as another company that his company works with, are up to. Sorry, I was having a bit of a sinus issue there. Um, but that's really only half of the plot. The plot that I gave may sound kind of simple, but I assure you that's only a fraction of what the real movie's plot is. Honestly, they should have they should have done like a Avengers Infinity War thing where they like posted a picture of a letter on Twitter and said nobody knows the real plot to this movie. I wish that I could talk more about the movie because this is a movie that is not only original in some of its ideas, but there are actually quite a few things that I don't think anybody would have seen coming. I sure as hell didn't. And if anybody says that they did, they're probably lying. But anyway, um, you know, I just wanted to talk about this movie because I, I actually really enjoyed this movie overall. And I actually, I actually saw this in a, in, um, I saw this with my AMC A-list, which I told you guys that I had switched from Movie Pass. And I saw it as a double feature. I saw this movie and Skyscraper, which I will be making a video later today, but I'll probably post it uh, in the next couple of days or so. Now with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into our pro section, which the first one is that Lake Keith Stanfield gives a great performance in this film, as I expected. I mean, he was good as the character that said the titular line, get out, in the Jordan Peele pop culture phenomenon, and he was one of the bigger highlights of... The, of the Netflix live-action film uh, adaptation of Death Note, which, as many of you guys know who have seen the video that I made of it, you know that I do not like that movie at all, especially because of the lead. And this was definitely the best performance that I've seen of him personally. I've always wanted him to actually have a lead role, and I finally got it, and it was, it was well worth the wait. His character starts off in this rough spot. He's living with his uncle, he's driving a Toyota that should have broken down multiple times in the film, but sadly we only get to see one, but that's me nitpicking. Um, he's jobless when we first meet him, and where he's at, you know, makes his rise a bit more intriguing, especially when he discovers how to use a, a white voice and finds out that he's really good at the job that he's got. Tessa Thompson may portray my favorite character in this entire movie. Her character named Detroit is an artist uh, who doesn't really focus too much on financial stability like her boyfriend Cassius does. And she's okay with that. I mean, all that matters to her is her art, which is v very visually interesting, and even it's sometimes thought-provoking as well. And uh, her part-time job as a, as a sign twirler. And she's shown having a lot of fun with the latter on multiple occasions throughout the film. And I really enjoyed this, that juxtaposition, uh, juxtaposition, I can't speak, uh, to Cassius when in matters to the, um, in what matters to them individually. And also, I may be wrong, but if this movie becomes a big footnote in cinema and, um, and the genre that it belongs in, which I will get in a little bit later, I can actually see there being a sort of clothing line for the film, namely for a few of the outfits that Detroit has, as well as the earrings that her, uh, that her character makes for herself. And actually, I just checked, there is merchandise, especially the earrings. Army Hammer appears in Sorry to Bother You as this psychotic CEO of a company called Worry Free, which I will actually touch on later. And he's freaking insane in this film. When we first meet him, he's doing loads of cocaine, 
and he's walking around in a frickin' moo moo, and it just looks so weird the entire time, but it worked because Hammer's just, he's such a great performer. I would actually argue that he's in the top three of, of overlooked actors that shouldn't be overlooked as far as the mainstream media goes, and I can't see anyone else playing this role as well as he did. He was just so... So good, and he's become very good at subverting expectations for people, playing characters that we wouldn't necessarily see someone who looks and sounds like him playing. And, you know, also, it's always good to see him pop up. I mean, I felt the same way when I saw him in Call Me By Your Name last year. I just love when I get to see him perform. So I do want to touch a little bit on the themes and ideas of the movie. So. The first thing that I thought of was the title itself, Sorry to Bother You. Not only is it a reference to what most telemarketers say at the start of their calls, and also what uh, Cassius says to start off his calls whenever he's calling somebody, but after watching the film, I... Oh, I got a random text. I'll check it later. Um, I kind of see the, the title as if the filmmakers are saying that they're interrupting our regular programming where we get lots of action blockbusters, reboots, sequels, superhero movies, whatever, and other terms that I can't think of right now in order to give us something very strange but also refreshing and original. And the use of the white voice was obviously, uh, uh, or was an obvious ode to code switching, the double consciousness that Dubois had talked about many years ago where he talked about the two personalities that black people have. There's their true selves and then the mask that they put on uh, in order to be accepted by society as a whole. In the spirit of that part, the film as a whole belongs in the satire genre. It's a commentary of America as a society and capitalism and uh, one thing that um, I was actually thinking about uh, when preparing the show notes, when I put in, like, you know, capitalism. I thought about um, what I'm actually about, to, uh, what I mentioned earlier with Army Hammer. Th there's a corporation called Worry Free. Their basic product is where people can get a guaranteed job for life doing uh, basically uh, basic manual labor, and what you get out of it is free accommodations and free food, and many people in this world are calling it the new slavery, and that's where the capitalism angle comes in. It's seen by many people as evil, but to the government it's not, and you know, it's just a corporation that has an idea that works and it's very proper, pr uh, profitable. And there's even some things revealed later in the movie about the company that actually show that it is an evil company, but the government just ends up praising the company because it's just another reason to make money and they actually made strides in a certain field that nobody has ever done before. And they're just like, oh my god, we're not worthy, we're not worthy. The cinematography was just wonderful to look at. Everything was symmetrical and colorful, intriguing, exciting, and I just kept wanting to watch. I had even gotten to a point like halfway through the, through the movie where I had gotten a drink and I really needed to piss and I just kept sitting there because it was like, one, I wanted to know where this was going and also it just looked really good. It, or, it was just really nice to watch. I, st I don't regret holding it in, but it really hurt. I need to stop doing that. The score for Sorry to Bother You was very interesting as well. Listening to it, it just, it felt so simple, but like there was something you know, under the surface, like it's trying to hide something until the proper moment, and it really intrigued me. And of course, the the soundtrack with the music made specifically for the movie felt very different and fit in with this version, or sorry, with this vision of Oakland, California that Boots Riley had in mind. It's not the type of music for me personally. I don't think I'll ever like pop the soundtrack on my. Um, oh, ah, sorry, my jaw hurts. I don't think that I'm ever gonna, like, pop the soundtrack into my Spotify, just sit down on a chair, relax, just listening to it. But honestly, with it in the film, it worked with the film's atmosphere. The direction by Boots Riley was also a joy to see. It's This was another great example of a first-time filmmaker just giving it all that they have and coming out on top. He's made a very stylistic film. Um, and has shown that he's willing to take risks. However, this movie is not a masterpiece, and I will actually be getting into that in my cons. This movie had a lot of ideas. Many of them 
were actually really good. Actually, I would say the majority are good, except like one of them's not so much. One or two of them. But it got to the point where maybe there's a little too much going on. There are too many ideas shoved into one movie. And also the first half of the film felt like your standard rags to riches story, but told through a different perspective and with a few different ideas that had never been tackled before, which I thought was interesting. But then halfway through the movie, there's this reveal, a sort of plot twist that happens, and it completely changes the narrative. And now, I wasn't or sure originally what to think about all of it. I mean, okay, it was weird and random and yet not random with how Riley set the narrative up in the first place. Um, but it's definitely unique and I wouldn't have thought of anything close to that happening throughout the film and I wasn't sure how I really felt about it. So, I gave myself a chance to sleep on it overnight, and I realized while I admire the choice and appreciate it for its unpredictable nature, I don't think it worked with the rest of the film that came before, and even after the twist, the film did a good job at keeping me uh, invested and entertained. But sadly, in the very last minute of the film, they made another choice that downright left me disappointed and just feeling downright disturbed, which I think that's what they were going for, but maybe more in a positive light, you know, like somebody who likes going to a horror movie likes getting scared and they're just like, oh, oh, I'm disturbed, I love it. But no, this was just like, ugh, I don't want to see this. I don't want to see this scene ever again. It just wasn't, I wasn't disturbed in a positive way. Also, small con, maybe kind of pointless, but it's like, it is something in the, in the movie that I didn't care for, and it's a subplot involving a love triangle. It just, it went nowhere. In the end, Sorry to Bother You is a really good watch. It's entertaining from start to almost finish. <laughs> and this film showed that Boots Riley could one day create something truly spectacular as long as he learns from his mistakes and learns to better execute his ideas as well as uh, give his stories just a better structure to work off of. I think that people will, uh, will, could and or will um, compare this to Get Out as far as a first time filmmaker going in with all of their ideas and concepts, but I would actually say that Jordan Peele uh, definitely succeeded better with Get Out than Boots Riley did with Sorry to Bother You. I think that if you can, you guys should definitely check out uh, Sorry to Bother You. And even though I don't like the change that occurs in the long run, I still envy everyone who experiences the twist for the first time because I will never get that feeling back. It's like, it's like watching Empire for the first time or watching Blade Runner 2049 for the first time. It's just this feeling where you feel like everything that you've ever known has changed forever and I kind of wish that I could actually feel that again. But that's where I will end this review. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do not hesitate to hit that like button. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button where, we, where you can keep up with everything that's going on on the channel. And like I said, I will be doing my skyscraper review right after this video. And I will get it out probably... Not tomorrow. Maybe Wednesday? Yeah, I'm thinking Wednesday. But anyway, thank you once again for watching and farewell until the next video.